Today we will review the URA Site Occupant Record Residential Tenant Form, which is one of HUD's documents for voluntary buyout or acquisition programs that have displaced tenants, therefore triggering the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Act, or URA requirements. A hyperlink to HUD's Site Occupant Record Residential Form can be found on the Texas General Land Office website at recovery.texas.gov. To locate the document, go to the Local Buyout and Acquisition Program page, which is linked below in the description section of this video. Scroll down to the right side checklist section and check on the URA Site Occupant Record Residential Tenant link. Once you click the link, you will be directed to the document on HUD's website. Download the document. Please note you will need a PDF reader or Adobe to view and edit the document. Federal regulations have a series of information gathering and record keeping requirements to ensure that displaced households have minimum adverse impacts as a result of their displacement. URA Regulation Title 49 CFR Part 24.205 requires that subrecipients undertake relocation planning to identify the problems associated with the displacement of households and develop solutions to minimize the adverse impacts of displacement. Planning should involve a relocation survey or study which identifies the following for the households being displaced. An estimate of the number of households to be displaced, including information such as owner and tenant status, estimated value and rental rates of properties to be acquired, family characteristics, and special consideration of the impacts on minorities, the elderly, large families, and persons with disabilities. An estimate of the number of comparable replacement dwellings in the area including price ranges and rental rates that are expected to be available to fulfill the needs of the households displaced. When an adequate supply of comparable housing is not expected to be available, the agency should consider housing of last resort actions. And finally, special relocation advisory services that may be necessary from the displacing agency and other cooperating agencies. In coordination, HUD requires that, to the extent necessary and feasible, the agency should conduct an on-site survey of occupants before approving a project. GLO considers the date a project is approved to be the date that the subrecipient determines the property and applicant are eligible. Therefore, on-site survey of the occupants should occur as soon as the general information notice is sent and before the subrecipient determines the property and the applicant are eligible. HUD recommends that the following information be collected in surveys. Any special communication needs, type of occupant, owner occupant or tenant. If required to move, their location preference. Length of time in the unit, Number and ages of persons in the household. Number of bedrooms in the dwelling. Employment status of household members. Household income. Means of transportation typically used by household members. And if household members are tenants, their rent and their interest in home ownership. Once the project has been approved, the subrecipient must conduct personal interviews of displaced persons to determine their needs and preferences. These interviews help the subrecipient develop a profile for each displaced household to aid in their successful relocation. The information obtained from these interviews will also enable the subrecipient to better estimate total relocation costs for the project. HUD recommends that an agency should plan to collect detailed information about each person's income and replacement housing needs in advance of the event triggering the initiation of negotiations, or ION date, at which time a specific notice of relocation eligibility must be provided 
as well as identify available comparable replacement housing resources in a sufficient number to meet the project needs. Therefore, in order to provide accurate advisory services and to identify comparable replacement homes, the subrecipient must have performed an interview with the tenant to record the characteristics and needs of the household prior to the initiation of negotiations. Note, the GLO considers the date of initiation of negotiations when the offer letter to homeowner is sent to the homeowner. When interviewing residential households that will be displaced, the subrecipient must identify the following significant characteristics. Number of people in the family, dwelling size and number of bedrooms, income range, and special needs. Additional needs to be covered during this interview should include identification and location of children's schools, places of worship, child care needs, transportation needs, community linkages, family needs, any pets, physical needs, place of employment, and personal desires and preferences relative to the location. Subrecipients must identify these characteristics and needs of the household to provide accurate advisory services and to minimize the adverse impacts of displacement for the tenants. The Site Occupant Record Residential Form is a guide form that can assist the subrecipient in recording the characteristics and needs identified in the on-site surveys and interviews. Any additional relevant needs or characteristics of the household that are not captured in this document should be attached to this document and noted in the case file. Recording all household information and completing this form are to be done in phases. In the first phase, the subrecipient will conduct surveys of the household and gather the previously mentioned information. They will input all of the information gathered from the surveys into this form. Then, in the second phase, the subrecipient will perform more in-depth interviews with the household to record the required interview information. In the third phase, the subrecipient will record all housing referrals for comparable housing. Remember, the housing listed should consider the needs and preferences previously listed. In the fourth phase, the subrecipient will record the selected replacement dwelling that the household moved into and all assistance received. For this video, we will use an example of a fictional applicant and location to explain the form. To begin, subrecipients should complete the top right box in the form with information on the project and application number. For project name, subrecipients should input their project title. For example, we have Rango County Local Buyout Program. Next, subrecipients should input the project number. This is the GLO contract number located in your contract. For relocation case number, you should input the TIGER project number that TIGER will assign the applicant after the application is input into TIGER. Next, in acquisition parcel number, subrecipients can input the local case number assigned if applicable. Then in the next row, the subrecipient should record the date of initial interview. This is the date which the subrecipient first interviewed the household occupants in order to obtain the household characteristics and needs to complete the site occupant record. After the interview, the subrecipient should input the name of the caseworker performing the interview and their position. In the next box, the subrecipient should obtain contact information on the tenant. Next to the name of the occupant, the subrecipient should fill in the name of the head of household as indicated in the interview. In the address row, subrecipients should record the street address of the dwelling where the homeowners reside. For telephone number, subrecipients should record the best telephone number for contacting the occupant. In Census Tract, 
The subrecipient should indicate the census tract and block group where the residence is located. In the next box, the subrecipient should indicate the characteristics of the household. Place a check in the box indicating whether the household is a family or individual. In this case, we have Mr. Smith and he lives with his son, so we would select family. Next, check whether the occupant is an owner or a tenant. Mr. Smith is a tenant, so he checked tenant. The next question states, is this address located in a HUD designated renewal community or empowerment zone? HUD designations of renewal communities and empowerment zones have currently expired. Subrecipients can leave the answer to this question blank as it is not applicable. Now fill in the date occupant first occupied the dwelling. This will be the date the applicant moved into their existing residence from which they will be displaced. In the next cell, the applicant will complete information about when required notices were submitted to the tenants. First subrecipient should input the date the general information notice was sent to the tenant. For more information about the general information notice requirements, see the general information notice instructional video on the same page you are viewing this video. Next, the subrecipient should input the effective date of the notice of eligibility for relocation assistance. The effective date of the notice of eligibility can be found on the notice of eligibility form that is sent to the tenant when the offer letter is sent. For more information on the notice of eligibility form, subrecipients should see the notice of eligibility instructional video on the same page you are viewing this video. Then the subrecipient should input the date the Privacy Act statement was executed. The GLO contract requires that subrecipients adhere to security and privacy compliance as indicated in the contract. For the completion of this question, subrecipients should input the date their GLO contract was executed. Now we will move down to the Occupant Racial and Ethnic Classification section. During the interview, the applicant should be asked what racial and ethnic classifications they identify with. They can make multiple selections in this area. In this case, Sam Smith has indicated other multiracial. In the next section, we have housing costs and characteristics of displacement dwelling. Here in this section, you will capture the relevant details of the displacement dwelling that the tenant is being displaced from. Subrecipients should input the monthly contract for rent amount. Then input the average monthly utility costs. Then total his monthly housing costs. The monthly housing costs are the total of the monthly rent plus utilities. Mr. Smith's monthly housing costs of $950 rent plus $140 utilities totals $1,090. If the program is a voluntary buyout or acquisition program, the subrecipient does not need to include homeowner information. However, if the program is involuntary and the homeowner's property is being involuntarily acquired, the subrecipient will also have to capture the relevant costs of the homeowner of the dwelling. Subrecipient should input the monthly mortgage payment, which should include both principal and interest. Then the average monthly utility costs that the homeowner pays for the dwelling, if any. For our example, the utilities are all paid by the tenant, so the subrecipient marks zero in this row. The subrecipient should also input the amount of real property taxes the homeowner pays on the property monthly. Finally, the subrecipient should add up the total monthly housing costs for the homeowner by adding the monthly mortgage plus monthly utilities plus monthly real property taxes. In the next cell, the subrecipient should input the number of rooms in the current dwelling and number of bedrooms, in addition to checking if the unit includes housekeeping or not. During the interview, Mr. Smith indicated his residence has five rooms, and of those, two are bedrooms. He does not have housekeeping. The next section will be occupant characteristics and income information. List the name, relationship to the head of household, sex, 
age, and occupation of all members of the household, and anyone who is anticipated will move into the household in the next 12 months. In our example, our fictional household is composed of Sam Smith and his son Ben Smith. Both of their names and characteristics were included in the table. Next, check off the source of income for each household member. They can list income from employment, welfare, pensions, or other. Examples of income that should be included are wages, salaries, overtime, commissions, tips, and bonuses, net income from operation of a business or profession, periodic payments like social security, annuities, regular contributions to income, payments in lieu of earnings, such as unemployment, TANF, etc. Welfare assistance, but not food stamps, periodic and determinable allowances, alimony and child support, all regular pay, special and allowances for the armed forces, but not hostile fire, earnings of temporarily absent household members, and income earned on taxable assets such as income earned on a savings account. For example, Sam Smith checked employment and his son Ben indicated in the other column that he received Social Security. Then in the next column, the household members should indicate their gross monthly income from the sources of income indicated. Finally, for all household members that checked employment, they should provide the name and telephone number of their employer. At the bottom of this table, the interviewer should total the gross monthly income indicated by all household members. For our example, $1,500 for Sam and $400 for Ben equals $1,900. In the next section of the form, the interviewer should gather and record information on special household characteristics needs and preferences to assist in finding comparable housing for the household. In the first cell, subrecipients should list all special characteristics of the household that may affect their housing needs. For example, disabled household members, elderly, no transportation, etc. For our example, Ben Smith is disabled and in a wheelchair. The replacement housing need is for an ADA wheelchair accessible dwelling. In the next cell, the family should list any preferences they have for their new dwelling. First, the subrecipient should check off the type of replacement housing the household wants. Do they want to purchase, rent, move into subsidized housing, or do they not wish to be rehoused because they will be moving in with someone else? Then list any considerations or needs that may affect the location of the new dwelling. For our example, Sam's car is not reliable, so he wants the location of his new dwelling to be near public transportation for the days he cannot take his vehicle to work. He also does not want to be more than 10 miles from his place of work. Therefore, the interviewer sensing more information was needed to be able to provide the housing needed clarified where the place of work was for Sam and included that in the notes. On the next line, input any other needs or preferences of the family in regard to housing. The family has a pet pit bull named Spot. This has been noted because it is a consideration that may limit the availability of housing. In the next cell, Input the rehousing requirements in terms of number of rooms, number of bedrooms, and maximum monthly housing costs or purchase price. Remember that the maximum monthly housing costs should not be more than 30% of the household income. The final number will be determined once comparable replacement dwellings have been selected. However, during this phase, subrecipients must have an estimate of affordable monthly payments for the household. For our example, their monthly household income is $1,900, therefore 30% of that is $570. Therefore, the maximum monthly housing cost should be $570 to be affordable. 
if a tenant indicated that they would like to purchase, a maximum purchase price should be estimated. The purchase price should take into account the maximum monthly housing costs and desired location. A more accurate maximum purchase price will be provided once the comparable units have been selected. See the Notice of Eligibility for URA Relocation Assistance Residential Tenant Instructional Video for more information on calculation of maximum payments. The fictional tenant has indicated that they want to rent, not purchase, so they placed NA on this line. In the next section, the subrecipient will list all housing referrals provided as comparable units. All details of the unit and how it is comparable should be provided. Subrecipients must provide no less than three referrals. However, if the subrecipient refuses those referrals, additional referrals may be needed. Remember, if the tenant does not have transportation to view the unit, the subrecipient is responsible for providing transportation and ensuring that the tenant has the capacity to see the preferred units and choose. In the first column, the subrecipient should input the date that the house was referred to the tenant. In the second column, the subrecipient should input the address of the comparable unit, including apartment or unit number if applicable. Then the subrecipient should input the census tract where the referred unit is located. Then the subrecipient should check off the type of unit, whether it is a rental unit for sale or subsidized housing. In the next two columns, the subrecipient should input the size of the unit, including the number of rooms and number of bedrooms. Next, the subrecipient should input the monthly rent plus the monthly utility cost. To determine the utility cost, you will need to use the simple method of utility allowance calculation. One method is through the local PHA utility allowance chart. The utility allowance chart is available from the subrecipient's local service area public housing authority. These charts are HUD approved and are updated by the PHA regularly with local costs of the applicant's utilities. Subrecipients should calculate a separate utility allowance for each of the comparable properties because homes differ in landlord-provided utilities and bedrooms. For our example, all three properties are three-bedroom, single-family, all-electric homes and total $287 for average UA monthly expenses. Therefore, for our example, the rental property is listed at $800 per month and the estimated monthly rental plus $287 for utilities equals a rate of $1,087. Then the subrecipient should check off whether the unit was inspected. All units are required to be inspected prior to providing replacement housing payments. Therefore, once inspected, the selected unit must be marked as inspected for the record. Next, the subrecipient should input the unit available date that is the date that the unit is available for move-in. Subrecipients should confirm this date will be before the required 90-day vacate date of the tenant in their current dwelling, taking into account the time that will be needed to move personal belongings. Then the subrecipient should input whether this is a low-income or minority area. To determine if the new dwelling is in a low-income area, subrecipients should find the most recent data set for LMISD which is located on the Mitigation Competition page on the Texas GLO website at the link shown here. Looking at the data set, subrecipients should search for the block group and census tract where the property is located and note the LMI percentage. If the LMI percentage is over 51%, then the new dwelling is in an LMI area. In addition, the subrecipient can determine if the area is a minority area by looking up the census tract on the ACS Demographic and Housing Estimates table on the United States Census Bureau website at data.census.gov. The subrecipient should search for the census tract where the comparable dwelling is located and review the demographic information provided for that census tract. If the demographic information demonstrates a more than 51% white population, 
when the dwelling is not located in a minority area. Finally, the subrecipient should indicate in the last column whether the tenant refused the housing, and if so, why, and if the house is the representative comparable to be used to calculate the maximum eligible replacement payment. See the Notice of Eligibility for URA Relocation Assistance Residential Tenant Instructional video for more information on the calculation of the maximum eligible replacement payment. After the family has moved into their selected replacement dwelling, the subrecipient should complete the Replacement Dwelling Unit section. To begin, the subrecipient should input the date the household moved into the new dwelling. Then input the address and census tract of the replacement dwelling. Then indicate if the address is located in a HUD designated renewal community or empowerment zone. Again, the subrecipient can leave the answer to this question blank because it is no longer applicable. In the next cell, choose whether the replacement dwelling was a rental or purchase and complete the monthly housing costs by adding the corresponding housing costs listed. In the next cell, click whether the replacement property is decent, safe, and sanitary or not. Then input the date of the inspection. Note, a copy of the inspection report should also be attached to the case file. If the original inspection failed and needed improvements, and a reinspection was performed, also include the date of the reinspection. Then input the number of rooms and number of bedrooms in the new dwelling. In the next cell, input the relocation payment that the household received. First input the type of relocation payment received. Tenants are eligible for moving expenses and replacement housing payments. For moving expenses, they should select whether they were reimbursed for actual moving expenses or fixed. Actual moving and related expenses are based on the expenses paid by the tenant. Fixed residential moving costs are payments based on the number of rooms of furniture in the displaced person's dwelling. The schedule is established on a state-by-state -state basis and includes all of the expenses incurred in moving, and the displaced person is then responsible for their own move. For more information on calculation of actual or fixed moving expenses, see the instructional video on the URA Residential Claim for Moving and Related Expenses. For replacement housing payments, select whether the tenant received rental replacement housing payments, down payment replacement housing payments, or they were a 180-day homeowner prior to the property's acquisition. Next, the subrecipient should input the amount that the tenant received for both moving expenses and replacement housing payments, the date that each claim was filed, and the date that each claim was paid. Note, ensure that copies of the claim forms are saved in the case file. In the next cell, the subrecipient should check whether the unit that the tenant moved into is in an area of low income or minority concentrations. Then answer whether the unit is subsidized. If the unit is subsidized, identify in the line below what it is being subsidized by, for example, housing authority, USDA voucher, etc. The next cell should be completed if the tenant used temporary housing prior to moving into their replacement dwelling. In the first line, indicate the dates that they moved to temporary housing and the reason they needed it. If temporary housing was not used, input NA. Then the subrecipient should input the address of the temporary housing unit, the rental amount, the date the household moved into the permanent replacement dwelling, the cost of moving expenses and increased housing costs if the rent of the temporary housing was more than the cost of rent at the displacement dwelling. Finally, the subrecipient should indicate if the tenant filed any appeals for their advisory services or assistance. If so, check off the type of assistance appeal made, payment appeal, 
housing appeal or other appeal. Be sure to keep a copy of the appeal in the case file. We hope you enjoyed this training on the URA Site Occupant Record Residential Tenant Form. If there are any additional questions during the completion of the form, subrecipients should reach out to their General Land Office Grant Manager. Additional videos covering other required local buyout and acquisition forms are or soon will be available at the same location you are viewing this one.